Welcome to a brand new podcast on the Confirmed Epic Podcast Network. Today you are tuning in to the inaugural episode of the Pop Culture Potluck. This is our pop culture variety show where we talk anything from comics to sports to TV to movies to video games to history to politics. You name it, at one point or another, once a month we will delve into these Topics that define our time, such as The Flash and Donald Trump. But today, in our inaugural episode, we're going to have the categories of sports, comics, movies, TV, and a bonus round. So how does this show work? My co-host here, Andrew Stokes, also known as Andrew Stokes, we randomly put topics in a bucket. Based on these categories, we drew these topics out beforehand, and those will be our topics for a 10-minute discussion within the given theme, sports, video games, etc., as mentioned earlier. As I said, this is time, so when you hear the Batman Forever theme music, you know that just like in shows such as PTI or Around the Horn on ESPN, The time is up, and we're going to move on to our next category and our next topic. So, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get into our first topic, something we rarely talk about on shows like the Confirmed Epic Podcast. And our first topic, Andrew, is going to be sports. All right. And we are in March Madness season. The Final Four is next weekend. I know Oklahoma, North Carolina, Syracuse, and one other team are in the Final Four. I don't know off the top of my head uh, what they, what the other team is. I think Andrew may check that for us. Sure. But it's a big deal here in North Carolina. Tobacco Road, Duke, North Carolina, college basketball, until the Panthers recently uh, got hot, made another Super Bowl run that they unfortunately lost. College basketball defines this area. Villanova is the other team, so uh, apologies to any Villanova alumni who are listening. I know we have plenty of you out there. So Andrew and I just went through a crushing, heartbreaking loss as Panthers fans in the Super Bowl, and that got us to thinking. The NCAA tournament, tournament may be the second biggest sporting event of the year. The Final Four itself may be the second biggest sporting event of the year. I don't think anyone will argue that the Super Bowl is America's number one sporting event. Right, Andrew? Right. So, our topic of discussion is, does the NCAA tournament rival the Super Bowl as far as being in the American consciousness overall? Do you feel like it transcends um, like the Super Bowl does? So we know that your grandma who don't watch a football game all year watches the Super Bowl for the commercials or whatever. Right. And we know the NCAA doesn't do this to that extreme, right. but is it a close second? And if, if not, is there anything in sports that is injured? I'm not sure... If it is a close second, I'm not sure that it is a distinct close second compared to some other things, maybe like the uh, NBA Finals or uh, the the World Series. You really think that the NBA Finals or World Series is going to be more popular than March Madness itself? That first day of the tournament is probably the biggest sports day of the year besides the Super Bowl. When you talk to most sports fans, again, we are in a bubble of Tobacco Road here. Sure. But also the, the, the national college game for football as well uh, is pretty big, and that itself might might be number two. Yeah. Um, Especially since they've added the playoff system in there. I think yeah. it, it elevated it before with the BCS. I don't think you could make that argument as well. And they're going to probably expand the playoff teams. Which they should. Which they should. Yeah, definitely should. And I think then that will end the argument of which is more anticipated because football at this time in this country is king. Yeah. And I think it would surplant the NCAA tournament or the Final Four. I don't know if it's quite there yet. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I, I just don't feel like – I mean, obviously the Super Bowl is king. And, like, yeah. it is just – America stops for that event. Right. It is a category all its own. I mean, it's, uh, some people consider it a holiday. 
It should be a holiday the Monday after as many <laughs> people that lay out of work or hung over the next day. Right. Um, and I just don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I can't think of anything else, I guess, greater than the Final Four, except for maybe that the college football championship. Let me propose something to you since we're on this topic. All right. How about we make a federal law okay. that the two home states for the Super Bowl that Monday is a holiday, so they can either celebrate or they can get over their heartbreak. The reason I bring this up is because the Clemson-Alabama National Championship game, they canceled – School in South Carolina that next, or sorry, they went on a two-hour delay that next day, yeah. So people could be rested from the national championship, which unfortunately Clemson lost. Is that yeah. something you would be in favor for, or is that just too pie in the sky talk? I think it, it just it, it it shouldn't even be just that one. Um, not even just like the two states or whatever. Or you think states. everywhere? Just everybody, because I mean, you have some teams that are are like you know New England. It's a Boston team. Really. Yeah, but you got to think but, you get Connecticut, Delaware, well, exactly. Rhode Island. So it's like there's multiple states for that. There's some states that have multiple teams. There are some states like South Carolina who a lot of people, you know, some people there might still be like Falcon fans or something. You yeah. know what I mean? And might be you're still pulling for the Falcons. Um, that is not our timer. That is my text message. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so, you know, there's some states like that where they root for a specific team that they're not necessarily associated with. Or there's still, I mean, anywhere you go, he, here in uh, North Carolina especially, there's a lot of Panthers fans, but there's a lot of fans of other teams. Uh, the Steelers have a big fan base here. The uh, Cowboys, America's team, love them or hate them. The Cowboys are kind of all over the place. Uh, and, uh, my beagle penny right now is like right up in the <laughs> microphone. I wish this was a video podcast yes, right now. It's horrible. Um... Oh, uh, was the Redskins are still big here? Because yeah. Since before the Panthers were here, there were a lot of Redskins. Raiders, here. Packers, obviously. You could probably argue the Packers have as many fans as the Cowboys do. So just make it a national holiday. This is a little rough around the edges, guys. There's a lot of dings and beeps, <laughs> but I guarantee you that none of those signify the end of the round. We still <laughs> got like five minutes to go. I'm going to throw one out there that we haven't talked about. And this is a All big right. one for my father-in-law, uh, the Masters. And it's coming up very soon. We have a lot of golf fans in this country, especially that stop and watch at least the the final day of the majors. The past couple of years, I've watched the final hour or so, that, if it's close. That, of the that is news to me. No, yeah, no, I mean, it's not something that my life stops or if sure. I'm out at buying groceries or hanging out with a friend, I'm making sure I DVR so I can watch when I get home. But I know people, especially friends of my father-in-law, who are big golfers, they take off work to watch the Masters. Wow. And I would probably say, if I were ranking them, obviously we're in agreement, Super Bowl's king. Yeah. Then I would go NCAA tournament final four, but I'm going to differentiate a little bit. I'm going to say the first day of the NCAA tournament, where you have game after game after game, and it's one buzzer beater after another. So let's say that. All right, let's do the Super Bowl, first day of the tournament, NCAA. Then let's do the college football playoff and national championship. Okay. And then let's do the final four itself. And I'm including the national championship game in there. Right. And then I would probably say Augusta, the Masters. I mean, that's crazy talk. I mean, I'm just, I, more people watch the Masters, I, I believe, or at least it's talked about a lot more than the World Series or the NBA Finals. I listen to sports talk on the way to work every morning during okay. football season and from time to time throughout the year. They never really talk about the World Series. They never talk about the NBA Finals. But they spend a lot of time, hours of conversation, talking about the Masters and golf. That's news to me. I mean, I know anybody talks about the Masters and golf. Really? really? I mean, obviously, obviously some people are into it, but... Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just my sphere of influence, I guess, that I... Have you ever golfed? Oh, no. no. I mean, I've never... I've, I've golfed been driving range, range, and I'm no good. I'm we not used, interested. I, uh, my cousin, his dad was a great golfer, and so we would drive balls and go out to the driving range at Challenger 3. I wasn't yeah. good, but I right. could drive a ball. Like any good geek, I disc golf. But uh, I'm yeah. golf, golf. Yeah, we're not considering that real golf. Golf, golf, golf just doesn't sound fun to me. Honestly. What about putt putt? 
Yeah, pop pie's cool. I like pop pie. <laughs> so if you were ranking like sporting events, what would be your ranking by after the Super Bowl? As far as what I'm interested in? No, not what you're interested in. What do you think's the most I don't important? Know. See, that's about the problem. Is that, that's the problem is I don't really pay attention to much of anything. Like I, I probably I would not have been able to name the Final Four if you had just now. I, I would assume. But you pay attention somewhat to college basketball because you have to around here. Like, this state stops for Duke Carolina. Well, that's it. I guess I watched the two Duke Carolina games. And you I, do. You make a point to watch those, right? right? Regardless if you are keeping up with those teams or those records. Around here, the Duke Carolina game is bigger than the Final Four. That's true. I would say if we're just talking on a state basis yeah. for sure, I would say. The only thing bigger than the uh, Duke Carolina game around here this year was the NFC Championship game and the Super Bowl. And that's because yeah. the Panthers. And the ACC were in tournament it. itself would be pretty big too. It used to be bigger, but now that they've expanded the ACC yeah. and brought in all these Northeastern teams, yeah. I don't think it has the luster yeah, as it did when it was like at Greensboro Coliseum, and you were almost guaranteed to get a state Duke or Carolina in there every year. Which Carolina won it this year, right? But you're usually not going to get that. Honestly, I I get burnt out on college basketball around here because people are so rabid and passionate about it. Yeah. And people who have never went to the schools or been on the North Carolina or Duke campus. Yeah. I call them Walmart Tar Heel fans. They go and get the off-brand Tar Heel stuff from Walmart. <laughs> they wear it and they're diehards and they pull for them. Like we do the Panthers, and they're not even close enough to gain an entry to a community college, much less, much less. I've never attended Duke, and I consider myself a Duke fan, so I mean. Yeah, but do you go around being rabid about it? No. My, my no. father in law is rabid about state. I get what you're saying. He yeah. goes, to, he went right. to NC State. They right. have a vested emotional interest. He met his wife there, his son goes there. Whereas people around here, they really act like they have the same passion as him for that team. And I can't tell what your heart feels, you know? If you like that team, you like that team. Sure. Something just seems, like, odd or off to me. But, I mean, it's just the culture here. I mean, it's a big thing. Everybody knows somebody that goes to the schools, went to that school. You know what I mean? So, you're going to say Super Bowl, then what? You just can't do a second? I know you said here in Duke Carolina, but would Uh, you say World Series and NBA Finals? Because baseball might, might is the not... national championship for football. Okay. For, okay, that might be number two for me, and then maybe Final Four, and then down the line. Um, I'm interested, and it's only four years. I'm interested to see where the the Olympics kind of falls into that because I feel like the Olympics is something was, that's just a world thing. Yeah, yeah but it's something that a lot of people always Cup talk too. about. And but like I'm like, how many people actually watch it? I'm not. My really... in-laws sit there and watch it, and I'm like, I like the volleyball and stuff. <laughs> because, uh, I, I forgot those two really good American volleyball players, but yeah. they were they were pretty hot. And I'm not gonna <laughs> lie, that's the main reason. I um, mean, yeah, I, I don't really them. watch too much Olympics. I kind of. Okay. All right, Joel Schumacher says this topic is up. All right, Andrew, let's go to topic two. And topic two is going to be comics. I'm going to start the timer now. My my topic here for this basically revolves around DC Rebirth. We talked about this on the Confirmed Epic podcast, much to your dismay, at nauseum last night. Yeah, and for a long time. Uh, don't check out mentally, Andrew. As I bring this up, no, I'm just saying for anybody who listens to the podcast, if you want to go ahead and you're just interested in the Batman versus Superman, skip review, the first two hours. Yeah, you can skip to um, uh, one hour, twelve minutes, and thirty seconds, and that's where we'll begin. So. Okay, okay, Andrew. <laughs> but basically, they're half heartedly rebooting this and they're right. putting their price points at two ninety nine a month, which right. is awesome because that's a dollar cheaper than Marvel. But the catch right. is they're shipping almost all their books, especially their heavy hitters like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, twice a month. Right. I'm basically paying, I'm basically paying six bucks to read Wonder Woman, whereas I used to pay four. So as somebody who at least at one point read monthly comics, you did. I did. As somebody who has long boxes in that closet and has collected monthly comics off and on and went back and forth between that and digital and trade, I want to ask you, what is the max you're willing to pay? And I know you may say nothing because you're not collecting them, but like, right. what, if you were collecting, yep. what's the max price point per comic? Uh, I mean, that's, again, it's, it is hard to say because I'm not collecting. 
And one of the reasons if I'm you not, were collecting, what would you read? Well, tell, tell me the characters oh. you would read. Oh man, uh, Spider Man. Yeah. You know, I've never really read monthly Batman ever. Yeah, uh, I'd be interested in, in reading some of that. Maybe the Justice League. Um, I think comic book wise, I like Justice League better than Avengers. I think I do too. Um, I mean, there, there's some. Int- I'd be interested in Arrow. Um, Green Arrow and Flash. I can go ahead and tell you, you're easily up in the fifty dollar. Like, if you want to read all Batman, read Justice League, read Arrow, read Flash, and Amazing Spider Man is twice a month. Yeah, wow. At four bucks, That's and really Miles cool. is only once a month. But if you want okay. to read him, I mean, you're easily in the fifty dollar a month range. Which with tie-ins, if you kept that up, you're in the thousands a dollar, thousand dollar a year range, and that's if you're reading no digital or no graphic novels, yeah. right? So, I mean, that's my, that's that's the reason I don't get into single issues. I don't feel like I'm getting my money's worth right now. Yeah, I, you know what I mean. And so it's it's a hard thing to say. I can sit here and say oh, I I pay at most fifty cents an issue. You know what I mean? But like I. I I wonder how fifty cents an issue. Well, I'm saying, I mean, this ain't nineteen thirty-two. The WPA ain't oh, higher. God. Apple's I'm ain't a buy, nickel. Yeah, whatever. Great. <laughs> um, I mean, that's the thing is, I mean, I, I, I guess it's a good thing about living in this country, in a capitalist country, is you know, you vote you, with your wall. Exactly. And it's not that I'm not interested in comics. Um, I'll probably subscribe to Marvel Unlimited here for a while. I did it last summer for a couple months. And that is a great again. deal. You get all the library, pretty much the complete library of Marvel back catalog for 10 bucks a month. But I believe the books are on like a six to eight month delay. Something like that. So the big thing you miss out on is being part of that cultural conversation of comics. And it is really I feel, you know, I feel like I'm not missing out on that because I feel like I'm already in it. You're in it by force because <laughs> yeah. of people like me and Jerry and I. But yeah. I feel like that it's really fun if you and I and Jerry are kind of reading the same books. Yeah, I, yeah. Especially, I know we're all busy and we don't get to do stuff like this now, but if we could make trips to the comic book store together. and I probably could have waited to see Batman vs. Superman if... Um, I knew we weren't doing like a podcast on it and people can be talking about it. Same with stuff like uh, Walking Dead is one of the shows I want to watch right away. Um, I, was, I, I understand being part of the conversation. Fallout 4, I bought it like, you know, within the first month it came out because I wanted to be a part of that conversation. I knew a lot of the podcasts I listened to, uh, they would be talking about it. So I understand that. And it's also like I understand – I don't – I don't want to say what, what what comics are are really cool. I like the stories in comics. You know what I mean in a general sense. Uh, it's a it's a you know, even even the mainstream comics. I like them. There's yeah. normally uh, at least a comic out there from Marvel or DC that I can get into. And they put like good the, artists and writers right. on the best characters. So you're getting quality. You say I like the art and stuff. So it's you know <laughs> I'm not sure there's a price point that's can I, I really. Uh, manageable for them. Listen, yeah. I want to interject real quick. I was listening to the Slash Films cast, I believe it was then, their review of Batman vs. Superman, and they were talking about how Zack Snyder was basing a lot of this on comics, the movie and stuff, and they're like, well, generally the stories in comic books aren't that good anyway. That was true in the 90s, but when it was art-driven and the comics bubble burst, but your mainstream books, where they got Eisner award-winning writers and great artists, they're good. Yeah. They're quality. And in most cases, they're better than the movies. Well, it, it also comes to defining good. We talked about this on the Confirmed yeah. Epic podcast about, what, you know, it's art and what people get out of it. Even if it's you know, the story seems hollow and it's just a lot of comics today, or a lot of uh, movies today, that these movies that people go for and they're making tons of money, like the Avengers and stuff, they have their basis in the comics and not just... Captain America's combo character, but some of like the stories and stuff. A lot of the um, this like, like Civil War. That, Civil you War. and I kind of met talking. About, well, you didn't bring it up, but yeah, I lent you the graphic novel. We talked about this before. We were in a, one yeah. of our college computer classes, and and the early Avengers kind of feels almost a, a little like a little bit like the Ultimates. There's definitely an ultimate flavor in there and, and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, a lot of these, even even if it is a kind of a shallower story and it's just, you know, entertainment, there's still value to that in a comic book. So, I mean, I don't know. It's subjective. I, I touched on this on our last episode of the Confirmed Epic Podcast. And, man, this, it's not the, the two ninety nine, four bucks. I'm willing to pay four fifty for a regular issue. I'll go up to that. 
but 450 once a month. The twice monthly thing is what gets me because if I'm somebody who wants to read, let's say, all of Batman, so I get Batman, Detective, All Star Batman, Justice, I'm quickly up to 30 bucks, which means I got to cut a lot of my other stuff that yeah. I read, and I'm usually going to choose Batman because that's where my heart's at. And I just decided, even though I'm willing to pay up the 450 an issue, that twice monthly thing has changed my buying habits. I can go to InStockTricks.com and get four graphic novels with at least six issues of content in them for fifty bucks yeah. shipped. Yeah, and then I could pay ten more bucks and get the whole Marvel catalog on Marvel Unlimited. So that's where I'm going with my buying habits. And as much as these new relaunches re- redefine the characters and stuff. Like Jerry said, they're jumping off points, too. Yeah. Am I going to read Rebirth? Yes, I am. But I'm going to wait for the trades to come out. I'm going to collect the characters I like in trades. It's going to be cheaper. So right now, you're, you're saying right now, how much are, are your books cost you? Four bucks, right? Most of my books are four bucks a month. And I say I spend probably 50 to 65 bucks a month on comics. So this $4 issue, and they're dropping the price to $3, but going twice a month, yeah, right? Yeah, DC is. Are right. they changing the number of pages per Same issue? Same number of pages, at least. So you get twice the comics for about, twice the content for about six bucks. Yeah. It's, it's you're getting more. I mean, essentially, we're, you're we're, getting more bang for your buck. Sure. But Comics is all about budgeting monthly because oh, we yeah, all, yeah, yeah. guess what? I like almost every comic book character. Yeah. Like, I love Daredevil. Yeah. And if I had the extra money, I would read every Daredevil comic. Yeah. But you have to choose. So that was one of my problems when I was, I mean, granted, I was like in high school. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was just, whatever money I could scrounge up, I would try it. I, I was, I would get maybe two books a month or something. Yeah. Because uh, I didn't have a you know job in high school or anything. Um, and that's just my problem is I don't know, I, I didn't know when to drop a book, really. You know what I mean? I didn't know. Were you a completionist? You wanted to always I, Essentially. Around. Like, I'm, I, I'm into this book. I'm reading this book. Okay, they've changed uh, writers. They've changed artists or changed both or whatever. And it's like, well, I'm already reading. I don't want to miss out. You know what I mean? I'm just one of those people. And I think, you know, it's easier for a TV show. Because TV shows very rarely go on for too long. They're going to end at some point. So even something yeah. like The Office, you know, where, where it started to kind of maybe dip in quality. It's like, I would stick with it. You yeah. Know, until through the end. The big but, thing now is following creators, though. Find a that, creator you like and stick with that's them. That's maybe what I should do. Um, but then I'm also, that's, that's why I'm more interested. If I were to start getting single issues again, I'd probably it'd be something something like Walking Dead or something. Do you something plan, where it's this continuous, same kind of continuous thing. Do you plan, like, you have really cut back on your trades once the Ultimate Universe picked up. Do you plan on at least getting some trades of the big two, Marvel and DC, anytime soon? Like, dipping into any stories? I don't know. Maybe. It's, it, honestly, for me, it, it kind of feels like this is an intentional thing. But for me, it feels like between you and Jerry, if there's a big enough story, you, you guys can, probably already have yeah, it, and you are just you okay. lend it to me. So it's yeah. like... You know, it is what it is. Yeah, I always lend out my trades. I usually don't lend out individual issues. Yeah, I wouldn't either. All right, so that is the end of topic number two. Great discussion on comics, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Andrew, let's get into our third topic of the day, and that is movies. There's a lot of controversy around Batman versus Superman, Donna Justice, and if you want to hear our opinions on that, you can find that podcast in all of this three-and-a-half-hour glory yeah. at thgww.com or thepicreview.com. But the debate I want to have coming off of that, we touched on a little bit on that podcast but didn't really get into it, yeah. is how does film criticism, whether it's Rotten Tomato scores or reading a film review by a critic you respect, like on Slash Filmcast or, or sorry, SlashFilm.com or on IGN, or like I said, listening to the Slash Filmcast, which is my favorite podcast, how does that impact your desire to see a film? And once you read reviews, do you ever feel like going into a film, or let's say just look at the tomato meter in general, going into a film that the movie has to maybe prove itself to you in a way that it wouldn't have if you didn't know the tomato meter score, Andrew? Um, I don't know. I, I try to keep an open mind to any film I go to, but I mean, there are certain films you go into. Like I went into Civil War, both hoping for a good time and expecting a good time. 
Yeah. Whether it turns out the way I want it to and how good I, I like it, I'm you know based on the other movies in this series, the uh, the actors and the characters, I'm expecting to enjoy myself. You know what I mean? At a minimum, get enjoyment out of it. Whether it's this movie's great or like oh that was fun, kind of forgettable, I'm at least you know ex- expecting something out of it. Um, so the critics don't it, critics. I just feel like sometimes what critics do is they get on a bandwagon either yeah. so for a movie or so against it, and they don't always look at it subjectively. Like, I felt I mean, like the momentum for VVS was, it sucks, we're all going to bash it, it makes no sense, we're going to pit ourselves against people who like this film and basically insult their intelligence if they like it. And that really just... Rub me the wrong way, yeah. and not every film critic did that. I just right. want to be clear well, that like slash film didn't do that, but there there were people on the internet who did. You mentioned the guy you were talking about yesterday, Angry Joe. Oh yeah, but that's a different conversation. He's, 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 that's his name. I think he's just angry about everything. I think it's his, his, his shtick. But um, I mean, I, I like, we talked about this a little bit last night, and I feel like the, the the criticism or the reaction hasn't been as negative as people think. They look at that 29% of Rotten Tomatoes and they're like, wow, you know, critics really hated this. I think critics were in general just kind of lukewarm. And that's just how, you know, a mo- that's how that kind of reaction can, can fare on, on Rotten Tomatoes and stuff like that. Um, for me, for, go ahead, go ahead. For me, I mean, really the critics' opinion, if I want to see a movie, there's certain movies, like the Batman vs. Superman, I was going to see. It could have zero percent on Rotten. Did you look at you look at the tomato meter score before you went, didn't you? Absolutely, yeah. Were you were you expecting it to be bad just based on that? Though, did you have that preconceived notion this isn't going to be a good film? Um, I guess kinda. I already kind of felt that way going into. I didn't based on what I knew they were trying to do, and based on the trailers, I didn't have a lot of faith. Yeah, uh, based on Man of Steel as well. Um. So, and then, you know, the, the, yeah, seeing a lot of these reviews coming out of what cross lukewarm or negative, it's like, yeah, it seems like it's going to be as bad, but I don't really, I mean, I try to keep an open mind, and this is one of those movies I wanted it to be good. I like Batman. I like Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman. I wanted this movie to be good. I liked a lot of the uh, cast in there as well, Eisenberg and, and Ben Affleck. All right, stuff. let's not spend too much time talking about that movie. Sure. Yet. But I just want to... I think the only way critics really influence me... Is if they give something praise, I'm more likely to see it. Because there's certain like Civil War. Civil War. If it come, if Civil War comes out 29, percent I'm gonna go see Civil War regardless. You know yeah. what I mean? And I encourage everybody to do that. If I mean, you know, if there's if some people ask, I see people online sometimes ask like, oh, should I see Fantastic Four? Was one. There was somebody on my Facebook wall. Did you go see that in theaters? I did. Because, again, my, my dad's a fan. I'm a fan of Fantastic Four. I was going to see that Michael B. Jordan, Miles Teller. I'm a fan, and I was going no matter what. Exactly. And there was somebody on my Facebook page. They're like, is this movie good? Should I go see this? And I, you know, I said to them, if you want to see it, go see it. I didn't think it was good. A lot of people clearly don't think it was good. But you go make your own opinion. If you're interested in these characters or these actors or whatever, go see it. If you're asking if it's, I think it's worth your money, I don't. But... You know, it's. I, I think it's worth it for yourself to go make your own opinion on it. So, well, but let's. I know I said I didn't want to talk about the specifics of Batman versus Superman, but what this movie did on the internet was it seemed to pit critics who just overwhelmingly disliked this movie yeah. against people who were not only fans of the movie. Yeah. But fans of the characters. A lot of times you saw critics give it, uh, basically lashing back at fans saying they're going to like this no matter what. And then you have people on the other side of the fence, the fanboys, the fangirls, basically saying that they don't feel like their film, their beloved characters got a fair shake. Whereas something like the Marvel movies, just because it's had a good track record, an a, a okay movie like Ant-Man. Let's face it, Ant-Man <laughs> was okay. Yeah. It was not a bad movie. It was an entertaining movie. That was pretty good. But critics were very overwhelmingly positive. I think it was like 77% on Rotten Tomatoes mm-hmm. or something like that. And it almost as if it had a built-in advantage. Like, it was just such an established I it, brand. I think it's just fanboys. I mean, every year, there's at least one movie that critics hate and people love. I mean, look at all four Transformers movies. Those are always panned. 
And they, the first one people kind of liked. But but in general, I remember Roger Ebert, uh, he, I remember he did a review on Transformers 2, and people were, were really like, oh, you're out of touch. I mean, he's out of touch. He, he wrote uh, kind of a response to his review about Transformers 2, because so many people were writing him saying he's out of touch, he doesn't get it, and that kind of stuff. Uh, there's always movies. There's always movies like that. Avatar. I mean, how popular was Avatar? Yeah, and, did it get terrible reviews? It didn't get terrible reviews, but critics, I feel, were a lot more lukewarm on it than the box office would would uh, show. But just seeing Batman versus Superman, and regardless if you don't think it's a good movie, mm-hmm. I don't think it's a terrible movie. And there were it has s- problems. It's messy. It is messy, but I just feel like so many people... When I saw Transformers Age of Extinction, that's the last one, right? Age of Extinction. When I watched that, I was like, this is a freaking terrible movie. Yeah. Like, yeah, maybe it didn't uh, feel that convoluted. You know, things made sense in and of a Transformers universe. Yeah. But I just felt like there's no substance, there's no message, there's no deeper character de- uh, deconstruction to the to these characters. Whereas I feel like Batman versus Superman wasn't near that level of an atrocity. But s- since everybody was on that side of the fence, the bandwagon, they just kept pouring on and pouring on and pouring on. Well, part of it is some of these movie critics might not be Batman fans. Like, not to get too spoilers yeah. for. For this movie, but think about specifically that the uh, that that one long dream sequence, the Batman in the desert, the parademons How? sequence. Yeah, but, but you, do critics know who the parademons are? What does that mean no. to somebody who has no idea about Batman or Dark Side or stuff? There's a lot of cool things That's in there for comic book fans. If you don't know some of these things, like I, I didn't even know. But that was the argument. Like that was the argument that the fanboys were making toward the critics. Sure, but you can't lambast the critics for that. If the critic didn't enjoy it, the critic again. Movie reviews are subjective. If like the that. fans love it and the critics don't, then that is what it is. People look at it like the critics have to validate whether they like this movie or not. That's how I feel. Some people are. That's so, it, that is the way some people are. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like it's almost some people see it, and it, a lot of these things are com- competitive, especially video game reviews and stuff. I remember I, IGN gave a seven point eight to uh, the Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire remakes, and people were like seven point eight to Pokemon. Are you crazy? These games are great. Like Pokemon fans what? love them. It's it's the it, it's not people people get hung up on these numbers and these scores. And, you know, I mean, like, everybody, when it comes to, like, your local sports team, I, the Panthers could be uh, without a win for the entire season. I'm still going to sit here and tell you why they're the best team in the NFL. That's a fan of them. Right. And it, and it just it translates, and people just see, like, they see Batman versus Superman at 29%, and they some people just feel personally insulted almost. Because, oh, Batman. Yeah. Like, Batman. That's, that's, my, that's Batman. my hero, you know? Yeah. I think that you have... Like two types of people when you, we're talking about this argument. You have the people that basically the critics need, like you said, to validate their love for something. Yeah. And you have people who are going to give everything, especially the things that they, they like, a, a fair shot and they're going to drain out the outside noise. Right. Our friend Evan yeah. vehemently despised. Batman versus Superman, yeah. and Superman's his favorite hero. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying he would have liked the film if it was 60% on Rotten Tomatoes, but I don't think he would have shit on that movie quite as much if it had a better word of mouth. I just think, and I'm not, I love Evan to death, I'm not trying to call out Evan here, <laughs> I'm just using him as an example because there's plenty of other people like that. Yeah, that they see the where the arguments going. They want to be on the right side of history. They don't want to be the Phantom Menace syndrome, saying it was good and looking back and it yeah. was complete and other bullcrap. So they take that side instead of like picking things and really trying to enjoy them. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know. I feel like maybe you know Evan being a Superman fan is kind of the opposite, and he's more critical to the Superman That's a good movie. Point. Than your average person would be. I don't know. I, I guess I'm lucky in that. I, I feel for the most part, I don't really care. Like I'm one of those people. I know there's some movies that are widely considered like crap. And I'll sit here and be like, this movie's great. You're crazy. You know what I mean? One of my favorite Peter Jackson movies is The Lovely Bones, which oh, I don't. I don't hate think was, that movie. Nobody likes that movie. I'm like the only person. So I mean, it is what it is. You just gotta go out there and, and like what you like. 
All right, that wraps up our discussion about film criticism and this topic. For our final topic, we will tackle TV. All right, Daredevil just wrapped up. It yeah. was fantastic. It was critically well received. Yep, as it should be. As it should be. It was awesome. Yeah. And a year ago, when Daredevil season one came out, and I watched that, you watched it. Yeah. And it was very critically well received, just like the second season. People universally love Daredevil, yeah. critics and fans alike. I said I liked Flash better. You did. The season one. Yeah. And that wasn't because I thought Flash was a better show. Sure. But kind of going back to that last conversation. Subjective. Yeah. I'm yeah. just so... Int- I really love that character. Not as yeah. much as I do with Spider-Man or Batman, but I specifically love the Barry Allen uh, iteration of the character. And I felt like it was captured so well that I said I liked it better. Yeah. Now, when I step back and look at that, I can yeah. tell you that Daredevil is... From a critical standpoint, a better overall show. Right. Higher quality, better acting, Mm -hmm. uh, less kind of dumb plot decisions that gets the main overall art muddled, right? Right. But I like The Flash better. Okay. And does the show, not just The Flash, but do these CW, these Berlanti shows, and we can't really talk about Supergirl because neither one of us has really, really watched Supergirl that much. But shows such as Arrow, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow versus something like Daredevil and Jessica Jones. Mm -hmm. You can throw whatever else in there you want to if there's something I'm not thinking of. Those shows, are they really that good? Or do we just like them because they meet our wildest fanboy and fangirl desires? Uh, Yeah, I think they're not that good. Um, but you watch almost I'm all these to, shows, right? I'm more up to date on The Flash than you are. Yeah, I'm like four behind at this point. I you think. know, I watch Arrow, I watch Flash, I watch Legends of Tomorrow, I watched a few episodes of Supergirl, um, and you, you know, watch all Jessica Jones, all right. there though, too. I think specifically when ta- when I'm talking about Flash. Um, and just the characters of Flash versus Daredevil. I think I like Flash more, but I like Wally West Flash more. Yeah, and that's kind of my. You Flash. grew up with that on the cartoon, right? Right. So having uh, so Daredevil versus Barry Allen, I'm probably leaning more towards Daredevil. Just if they were even, even if they were just equal shows, just because yeah. I probably like Daredevil more than, than Barry Allen. Um, this, this is my problem. I, I, I do like these shows, and I enjoy talking about the shows with people. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people that watch Flash and Arrow. But the problem is, yeah, I don't think they're, they're necessarily good shows. But people go on the internet and they really think these shows are critically fantastic. See, that, see that's, yeah, that's my problem was I'll, I'll talk to other fans and they're like, I'll put, I'll put you know, Arrow up against any other show on TV. And I'm Something like, like a Game of Thrones or Game Walking or, Dead or, 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 or House of Cards. Yeah. yeah, and I'm just like, You're, that's insane. You know what I mean? It, to me, they're almost like a guilty pleasure show. Like, I, I'm going to watch every episode of these probably until they're done. Yeah. Um, but like, if my dad came to me and said, "Hey, what? You, can you recommend a new show for me to watch?" I'm recommending Daredevil way before I recommend Flash or Arrow. I wouldn't recommend Flash or Arrow. Like they're just, like they're just. I feel like they have a a niche audience. Absolutely. But they've really tapped into that niche audience yeah. where they have a cult like following. Because yeah. you're talking about not many in. The grand scheme of things, compared to something like The Walking Dead, where 16 million people watch it a week, right? probably about between 3.8 to, on a great week, 5.5 million people watch The Flash or Arrow, okay? Yeah. So you're talking about, it's not close to something like The Walking Dead in ratings, right? and I would say not in quality either. I think yeah. you would agree with that. Yeah. But those 3.8 to 5.5 million people, they are watching it religiously. If yeah. they don't watch it then, they're watching it on DVR, they're watching it online, they may be finding a way illegally to watch it, but they are watching it. And they, the Berlanti guy, is not going to lose his audience. It's I don't know. I, see, yes, I feel like you are falling behind on these shows. I have a friend who just gave up on both of them. I think. But I'm like dedicated to catching up on Flash. I'm going to watch some of Legends of Tomorrow. Now, Arrow... You see, that's the, the third thing. season. I know a lot of people who are going to Flash only. I know there's a lot of people that never gave. Would you just... agree that Flash is the best of those shows? Um, from not just you liking it, but from a critical perspective. 
I think it is, personally. I don't know. That's a long pregnant pause there. I'm not, I mean, I'm, between Arrow and Flash, is, if you had to pick one to watch of those shows, what would you pick? If I had to pick one to watch, it would be Legends of Tomorrow. Really? Okay. Which feels more like, it feels like a Justice League TV show. To me, yeah. to me, it, 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 it's, to me, Legends of Tomorrow, Legends of Tomorrow is, it has a lot of like the team up action stuff that I like, and it's a lot lower on like this stupid drama. They're injecting some drama into the show. But, like, you look at, like, an episode, there's not, there's not an episode of Flash or Arrow where at some point I'm not rolling my eyes at some stupid character moment. More so happening. with me, in my experience, get, I'm way behind on Arrow, sure. but more so in Arrow, especially with the Felicity stuff. Not that we have to talk specifics about that, but by God, that character started out as a strong female character. They've ruined her. I mean, yeah, they ruined, they've ruined a her. very good character. Yeah. There, there was there was a, a a very there was there was a there was a small break in the show here recently about a month the 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 last episode of Arrow before the break had a very important moment in 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 the story of of Oliver and Felicity yeah. I literally busted out laughing I literally was like oh my goodness I think I kind just of know just from internet conversation yeah. what it is but. It's, we it's, won't say. You know why I think people really love those shows, though? Why? It's because... I don't know. I feel like when we were talking about Batman versus Superman last night, a lot of people made the argument, that's not my Batman. And Jerry, people like Jerry and I, who Batman is their favorite hero, we used a lot of justification to explain why that Batman is acting the way he is. Right. Whereas shows like The Flash and Arrow... These are reverent portrayals of these characters. They know are what... They? I feel like Barry Allen is. I feel sure. like I feel like Oliver is like completely new Oliver, based on what I know. And the comics, that's a criticism of the comics, is they're changing to match the show. Yeah, I think now with Rebirth, though, they're, they're bringing back a lot of the classic Ollie stuff. So maybe, that's maybe, maybe, maybe that's a good... I, I always thought... I mean, everybody's talking about I just think at least by the, the way the characters act. Like, you don't ever watch Arrow, I think... And be like, would Oliver Queen really do that? I mean, you may do that with some of the mushy relationship stuff. Yeah. But as far as when he's fighting crime, sure. whereas in something like Batman vs Superman, there are times, no matter how much you like or dislike that film, you question character motivations. Like, would Superman do that? Would Batman do that? You yeah. Know? Whereas I feel like people who love Barry Allen Flash never had to ask themselves that question. When they leave an episode of The Flash, I guess, but there's just so many silly moments in those shows. Like I, I mean, you can't watch. But plus, they can't watch Arrow, and you watch Arrow and Diggle and and Speedy and all these people bust into a place, and they're shooting arrows and, and literally shooting guns at people, and they're supposedly killing nobody. Yeah, and it's that is such that's the stupidest part of that show. I'm I'm cool that they want Green Arrow to not be a killer. That's great. That's wonderful. But like, which he was in the first couple of seasons. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. Well, the first season, they took a bow in the second season. But like, that's the stupidest part of that show. They're literally shooting pe- armored people with guns. It's like, where are you shooting them that you can you hit them in one spot and knocks them out, but they're perfectly fine. Like, come on. Like what's it's stupid. When with the Flash finished up, and the, we were talking about it on the Capes podcast on DGWW Radio Network, and I said I loved the Flash so much, and it was probably my favorite piece of superhero movie or TV anything yeah. since the Dark Knight trilogy, which we all know how much I love that trilogy. But just because I felt like so faithful, like the Barry Allen, yeah, almost faithful. It is faithful. Daredevil's faithful. Not, so not only is Daredevil faithful, but it's critically acclaimed and it's shot so much better. Yeah. So I, I, I will never argue with you that Daredevil's a better show than Flash. Yeah. But I'm still where we were at at the beginning of this combo. I like Flash better. If I had to pick one to uh, watch the rest of my life, no, I would watch Flash. Absolutely not. I mean, it, it, you know, they... <laughs> It, Daredevil definitely has better production values, but that doesn't necessarily make a better show. To me, it's it's just how it's written and acted. Like there's so many just stupid things that they they only do to progress the plot to where they want it to be. And like Arrow and Flash, that I, I just don't feel that way in Daredevil. It feels more natural to me. All right. Well, let's zoom on out of this topic and into our final one of the day. Into what 
is our bonus round. So this goes outside of our kind of geekdom conversation of right. comics, TV, movies, video games, and whatnot. And for this one, we're going to do a mini historical topic. For those of you that don't know, I'm a history teacher, U.S. history. I love history. I keep up with politics. And, you know, history is happening all the time, so pay attention, people. But we're going to talk post-World War II. So post-World War II or World War II to, like, 9-11 is considered, like, modern American history. Anything after 9-11 is considered post modern American history. Yeah. So the topic here, and this comes off of a conversation I had uh, with my grandmother yesterday. Donald Trump was on. I said, have you really seen anybody like this in your lifetime? And she said, you know, even people like George Wallace or Barry Goldwater, which were two very, very conservative candidates and pretty much racist people. Mm -hmm. I've never really seen somebody like this. And I would often ask my grandfather when he was alive, like, what for us it's obviously nine eleven, but like what event sticks out to you the most? And he was a kid when World War Two started, and both okay. his brothers served. But he said the two things for him were uh, FDR coming on the radio to declare war when he knew his brothers were going, but that was more of a personal reason. Yeah, and he was so young, you know, he didn't really grasp the gravity of that until way later on. Mm-hmm. But he said the Cuban Missile Crisis. Ah. You know, there was a big fear of that this could really happen. We could really get nuked, and it's a fear that he said is just so, you know, indescribable to kind of match today until 9-11 and until terrorism popped up. You know, he told me this when I was a kid, so we're talking before 2001, so obviously we kind of know what that's like. So we're going to take this conversation in more of a lighthearted kind of fun way, or it doesn't have to be. If you could go back, all right, so from... Let's say from the time you were born okay. to post World War II America. Yeah. All right. What event? And we're gonna say you're gonna stay alive. You're going to have immunity. Nobody's gonna know you're there. Now you can actively participate yeah. and have a good time, but there's no there's no risk to your well being. Okay. Like what one event or place in time or maybe political figure that you can meet. Who would that be? Where would you go, Andrew? Do you want to go first or you want me to tell you mine? Uh, I can go first. Um, okay, go ahead. Let me start our timer, though. All right. So, it may be uh, that I'm watching the show, 11 yeah. But one of the things is, is definitely the assassination, assassination of JFK. Not necessarily because I want to see that. Uh, one, because you can see it today. I mean, there's that Bruder film and stuff like that's out yeah. there. I showed uh, that in my class, even though it's brutal. I think it's something everybody should see. Right. Um, it, I, I just, I, I'm so, I, I'm not one that believes in conspiracy theories. You know what I mean? And I really, I really don't even believe. I'm that, not either, but I think there's something there. Too much. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just, yeah, I'm just curious. Maybe it's so much has been written and talked about it. And again, maybe it's because I'm watching this show now. But like. I, I feel like the story we know is in general exactly what happened. You feel like it is? It is. It is. I, but I'm just so freaking curious. I, read I just want to go. Couple. I want to spend some time around that time. I want to follow uh, Oswald up until he gets you know killed by what Jack Ruby. Um, I just want to. I just want to. Be around that time and just try to like take notes and see what I see, you know. So not just being at that actual day and event in Fort Worth, but right, it kind of within the year leading up to it or so. Yeah, yeah. I read a book about the uh, assassination two or three years ago, and it, God, that writer made great arguments about CIA basically planning the assassination and the FB, FBI working with the CIA and all these. And the military, basically, because they thought JFK wasn't aggressive enough toward the Soviets, and yeah. they thought LBJ would, and he was in on it. And I don't think that that interpretation is exactly true, but I do think something of that vein happened. Yeah. There's too much smoke, and I'm not a conspiracy theory guy yeah. at all. But, yeah, that's a very good one, very okay. good one. Mine would be, and I'm looking at it right here, and I would have to take my wife with me. Mine would be Woodstock. Oh, that was, sure. that was my second one. That was well, like I'm Woodstock. glad you didn't say Woodstock. We're yeah. looking at this 1960s collage puzzle that's been talked to death on this podcast network. But just, I mean, it was unsanitary. 
there was a lot of uh, you know sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Mm-hmm. But just to see experience it, the experience it, and see all these legendary artists that I'm never going to be able to see, and I, that's for me not being a music person would almost be just as equal of a joy to see my wife get to experience yeah. these. Uh, and there's no rules, so I can take my wife with me. Sure, yeah. To see her get to experience and enjoy that. And then going back, knowing how much of a cultural and political significant event this was. Because I don't think when people were there, they they realized what they were. Because they were all high out of their minds. Yeah, they were all very (laughs) high, naked, and there was a lot of crap and other things on the ground. I I think for me, it's not even seeing the artists. It's it's people watching. Just seeing yeah. that town get uprooted and, you know what I mean, just see this swarm of people that are just, just uh, you know, um, come down on this town. I don't know. Just just the whole experience is pretty cool. We've been kind of going through a 60s and 70s retro phase. We recently watched uh, Dazed and Confused and not too long before that, I guess it was a couple months before, we watched Cameron Crowe's Almost Famous, which took place during this whole music craze and when Rolling Stone magazine was first becoming a thing and stuff. And it's just things were so different back then. Just to be able to experience like those social yeah. norms as opposed to ours. Yeah. And I'm not talking about things as far as political correctness or how people speak. But I just felt that people's outlook on the world was pessimistic, Mm -hmm. but their daily lives, because of that, were joy-filled. Sometimes too much. When you're talking about the sex and drugs and just being irresponsible and whatnot. There's a line in Batman vs. Superman that Perry White has. He's like, you know, Clark's wanting to basically do the right thing and report on the Batman. And Perry has this great line that says... Clark, the American consciousness died with uh, John, Robert, and Martin. Yeah. And they're talking about Robert Kennedy, Bobby right. Kennedy. I mean, Bobby Kennedy, John Kennedy, and Martin Luther King. You can even throw Malcolm X in there, too. It was yeah. around that same time. But that was true. That was when America lost its innocence. And to be there in that moment when America changed that basically pendulum swing. Yeah. You know what? I don't think we had another one like that until 9-11. Like, I think 9-11 changed how we viewed things because, yeah, I was younger. I was a kid. I was in early high school. But I remember a significantly different feeling toward the world and toward our country before 9-11 yeah. as opposed to after 9-11. Yeah, Even I though agree. you were younger, do you have that same feeling? Yeah. I mean, it kind of puts you out into the world and... You know what I mean? And now all of a sudden we have a president who's talking about going, you know, we're invading countries. You know what I mean? Which is something we never thought we would see. I mean, yeah, we had the Gulf War when we were younger, right. the Bosnian Civil War that we intervened in Kosovo and stuff like that. But I don't think I ever thought, being somebody who's always been interested in wars and history since I was in, like, middle school, yeah. ever thought I would see a traditional sense of the war and people protesting war. Right. And that was the first time we had really seen that people be down on America Mm -hmm. since Vietnam and since those people got assassinated. So I think it's fascinating that I want to go back to that time, but I live in a time that although it's very different, the way the American consciousness changed is very similar. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 that's the other thing. I, I mean, I would, I would like to just be around that time and see some of these people. I like the the, uh, the MLK speech, the I Have a Dream speech. Yeah. I'd love to be there and experience that. Um, the moon landing is one. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily be on the moon, you know what I mean? But that would be pretty cool, too. But, uh, you know, just to be, you know, be around when that happens. Can you imagine you know? watching that on your television? No, no I cannot. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, I mean, we might we're probably living in a time where we're going to see us land on another planet. Maybe and if we like, ever invest in NASA again, but we'll see. Nah, well, somebody's going to do it, whether it's you know the government or a private company. Or, somebody's going to do it in our life. Or another country. Like. Yeah, uh, and it's just it's going to be it's going to be crazy. Um, just to be experiencing these different time periods, but I mean, I'd love to experience every time period. If I could time travel to every decade 
Back to freaking cavemen, I would. That's you why know? I didn't. That's why I made it post World yeah. War Two because I knew you'd probably go like Roman times or something. Another, like this that. is this is pre World War Two, but another conspiracy. Now, this is a conspiracy I do believe in. It's the only conspiracy I believe in is uh, Jesse James, the assassination of Jesse James. I honestly the cowboy, right? Yeah, the Brad Pitt one. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I honestly believe that he was not killed and he was not assassinated. Like I, I, I would have been like late 1800s, after so, the 1850s, or so after, I, right? Yeah, yeah, probably. So I'd like to go back to that time and just see if he was really killed because I really don't feel like he was killed. So I would hate to be in that time. I just want to go see it. I, it's just you watch these movies. We just watch Dazed and Confused and just how... You know, things are so laid back with how the teachers treated the kids and the conversations they could have with the kids and just yeah. not such a rigid structure with curriculum. Like, you always have that teacher on a movie who basically, you know, throws the book out the window and says, you know, yeah. screw this. And I try to do that to a certain extent and really talk. To, there's so many times I'll be like, guys. What we're talking about is more important than the test at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And but you basically you got to play the man's game, and yeah. you know you got to do your job, and that's fine. That's what they pay you for. But you see so much more. I feel like there was many more of those moments in the past. And how many times do you hear your parents say, "Well, it's not like it was when I grew up," or "We live in a different time," like insinuating that I, you you could have done this back then, but now you can't. Yeah, I say that too, though, somewhat. But we say it jokingly. Somewhat, but there's times with my nephew, especially the way he acts sometimes, and the way he's. I remember one time. Are talking about if you acted that way when you were a kid? Or? No, I mean like just certain things. Like we, he had, uh, he went to his uh, his. He, he goes to his room. He has a TV in his room. He's had a TV in his room for like forever. Yeah, you know I mean he's one of those people. He's one of those. He watches TV to fall asleep. Maybe not the best thing, but it is what it is. Did and you not have we, a TV in your room? Oh, I had a TV until I was in high school in my room. Really? And it was I had like, one in like middle school. I definitely didn't have one when I was a kid. And we, I, I remember his mom telling him, one, my sister, telling him, you know, when we were going, you know, he was complaining that he wanted a different movie to watch or something before we went to bed. And she's like, back, you know, when I was a kid, we didn't have anything like that. We just went to sleep. And he looked at her for a minute. And he just started laughing, like, yeah, yeah right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you does know. that make you feel old to say that? Yeah, it does. So, but I mean, I, you know, I kind of say that too sometimes. But I mean, it, I don't know, times change. It is what it is. Times are changing. Times are Bob changing. Dylan. I mean, I wouldn't, watchman even, started. I wouldn't even mind going back as an adult to some of the times I've already lived through. Like, maybe the early I, 90s. I was alive then. But I, I had a completely different perspective. Like the OJ on. stuff. How would you do yeah, that? Yeah, stuff like that. Or just, wife, just in general. Just the culture in general. To say, like, this may sound weird, but I feel like my wife has, like, a old soul in a way with, like, she just... It's not just your wife, buddy. You too. <laughs> yeah. But I, just feel, I guess that's true. That's me too. I just feel like she relates and connects to uh, this kind of era... Sure. In a way that that I don't, and, yeah. and it's really cool to talk to her about that, yeah, and to get her point of view. And it's just, it, you know, that's what a good relationship is about. You bring different things to the table, and you, uh, you know, balance each other out. So. I, I normally bring food to the table. Yeah. All right. Well, we're about to leave this table. That is all of our topics for this week. Uh, well, this month, this, we plan on this being a monthly podcast. Maybe we'll be like DC and this will be a bi-monthly podcast. And, and we'll charge you less for it. Yeah, won't charge you anything. <laughs> In the summer, uh, especially, as I said, I'm a teacher, I'll have more time. But if you download, if you listen, we appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, or, or concerns, or you want to propose future topics, that's where we hope that we get to. We get emails and comments saying, hey, I like this sports topic or this comic topic, or this random political history topic, whatever, leave those in the comment section or send them to th, uh, pick review, thpickreview at gmail.com. And also, you can basically hit me up on Twitter if you have a topic, at the real Brad Bell, the R-E-E-L Brad Bell. And Andrew, where can they find you if they want to propose uh, topics? You can also hit me up on Twitter, at a.k.a. Andrew Stokes. Brand new Twitter handle. Brand new Twitter handle. Same great Twitter feed. And until next time, thank you for listening. We are back. back.